and welcome to Broken Entertainment. So it looks like DC Comics is starting to begin the wind down process to closing. Uh, they have cut down to a line of 34 titles in March, and we know they have lost one of their two distributors. And if you look at, there's two really interesting things to note if you look at their their March comics. Okay. Um, first of all, as Ethan Van Skyver pointed out in his video, 13 of the 34 are Batman or Batman related. And then the other thing is if you go through these here and actually look at what is new, uh, there's not much. I think, um, in fact, if you look at what's coming out after Future State, or for Future State, I should say. Alright, so we know Yeah, here we go. Here's the, the Future State listings. The Joker. Issue number one. Crime Syndicate, issue number one. Swamp Thing, uh, it's farther down here, but issue number one. Justice League Dark, believe that's on here. Yeah, here's Swamp Thing. That may not be on March. No. Uh, okay, so that's not out yet. Well, the new Wonder Woman's in Justice League Dark. That's odd. Uh, Wonder Woman. Teen Titan Academy. I don't think that's on here yet either. Wait, there it is. Teen Titan Academy. Okay. The new Green Lantern. Suicide Squad, Detective Comics, oh wow, uh, is that on here yet, no, no, well, that's an ongoing, Batman, Superman, so that's Future State, Harley Quinn is Future State, Batman is Future State, so, go back here, all of these number ones are future state. Batman is future state. Sensational Wonder Woman is future state. Harley Quinn, future state. So what does that mean? So thirteen, so half of the books are Batman related. Another big chunk are Future State. I mean that that's your smoking gun right there. When I, I've been through the process of shutting down a business, and to the public it looks like it kind of happens overnight, but if you go back and look at how things were going, you can actually point to where they started moving towards the process of shutting down because it doesn't just happen overnight and you can see the same exact thing here uh, first they cut down their comics to 34 second they've got future state coming out but remember future state's been in the works for at least a year uh, you know you have to organize you have to, to hire the right people for the different books you have to plot out where things are going to go you have to to get the books actually ready to print that's not something that happens overnight so the money's already been spent for future state so they go ahead and release it and it does two things one it looks like they're not shutting down and two it tries to get some of the money back that they spent on it then if you go down and look through what's left most of these are going to tie into future state as well 
or they're wrapping up existing storylines. There's nothing new coming out. You know, the new, like we said, is Future State, but that's not new. It's been in the works. What you do is you cut back on what you're producing, you cut back on your investments, and then you cut back on and try to get rid of inventory, which is essentially what they're doing through here. And to make it look like they're not shutting down, because then if it looks like they're shutting down, people will be less inclined to buy their stuff. So you coast through on Future State, you wrap up existing storylines, and as you do so, you gradually cut back as things finish that are selling, you cut it, you cut it out. All of a sudden it'll just disappear, it won't be announced, it'll just disappear. And then, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the process depends how long, how much work on Future State's been done. You could be looking at a year or two. I think Ethan Van Skyver's predicted the end of 2021. That sounds about right. And then you shut it down. Because DC Comics is owned by AT&T. They're $100 billion in debt. They need to make money. DC Comics doesn't make money. And DC Comics is bad PR. It has comic book creators attacking customers online. You can't do that. If you want to get out of debt and make money as a major corporation, they have to make decisions that other people would not have made. Like shutting down DC Comics. So, the easy thing to do is you wind it down, you go through everything that's already had money spent on it, you release that, and then as things wrap up, you just gradually take them off the list until you shut it down and then you say okay now we're going to sell our license if if somebody wants to like Boom Studios for example wants to make a Batman comic they can now do that they have to pay us a fee but it gets it completely eliminates the overhead of DC Comics while still allowing them to make money off of it as long as they own the IP they can have movies made, they can sell the IP to people that want to make cartoons, they can sell the IP to people that want to make comic books, and all that stays out there, but they don't have to do any of the work. You know, uh, so keep an eye on it. Uh, I think this, that what I said is going to play out, and you're going to see old stories wrap up, the books are going to drop off, and eventually they're just going to quietly announce that they're shutting it down. And I mean, you know, even without this list, we already know they've fired a huge chunk of the executive staff. You don't, and they've hired no one new. You don't do that if you're intending to keep a company afloat. You know, the first wave, you could have said, okay, they're getting rid of the dead weight. They're getting rid of the people that dragged the company down in the first place. They're going to hire new people. It'll be fine. But then they did a second wave, and now there's like almost no one there. Doesn't seem like anybody there cares. You know, so here we are. Um, I actually think at the end of the day, it's going to be a good thing for the characters. And I think it's going to be a good thing for comic books. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but if you take the dead weight out of something you open that space up for something new to come in and if the characters still exist which they will as an IP other people with good writers and good creative teams can make new stories and that's exactly what you're gonna see you know I, I brought up Boom Studios because Boom Studios does exactly that that's what they do they do franchises that other people own they do Power Rangers, they do Ninja Turtles, uh, uh, Firefly, I think it is, or Orville, one of the two. But anyway, they do, uh, do franchises. They don't have their own work, for the most part. And you're going to see companies like them say, ooh, I want to make a Batman comic. Because who doesn't want to make a Batman comic? Batman sells a bunch of stuff. Everybody knows who he is. Same with Superman. 
Now, you know, Aquaman, eh, probably not. But you'll probably see him in, in like, a, a Justice League kind of thing. I really think this is effectively going to cut out part of the disease that is the modern comic book industry and allow new growth. And it will be good for these characters. And will we lose some characters? Probably. But the core, the core characters everybody knows and cares about will continue. They'll just be done by somebody else. But I think uh, EVS, as he usually is, is probably spot on. 2021, 2022 uh, sounds about right for them to be shut down. And it kind of sucks. But like I said, I think it'll ultimately be a good thing. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you next time.